Hi, I'm Tim Williams with Dwyer Williams Potter Attorneys. I'm the lead litigation attorney here at the firm and also one of the partners. Let's talk about degenerative disc disease. Here we have a model of a nice healthy back. We see a, a big thick disc here that's nice and soft and supple that allows for plenty of movement. We see some very smooth bones above and below. Here we have a, a, a disc and some bones from the back that's uh, later on in life. And so we see some loss of disc space height. It's not as thick. There's not nearly the separation there was between the two bones as, as we saw before. And also the disc is sticking out a little bit and it's turned red, signifying that it's lost its suppleness. It's harder. It's not as bendable or pliable as it was before. And we also see here on the right just a little bit of lipping. So the bones are starting to grow out and over the disc itself. This is a section of the back taken much later in life, perhaps in the 60s or 70s, it's different with, with each person. But we can see there's a great loss of the disc space height here. There's hardly any separation between the two levels of bone. And we see quite a bit of lipping or osteophyte formation, also known as bone spurs. And that's where the bones are actually growing out towards each other over the disc. And finally, we have this disc here. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to see, the disc is in the middle. You can see that gray substance, that's actually the disc. It's completely dried up or desiccated. Uh, this is much, much later in life. This is perhaps in someone's 90s, maybe late 80s, early 90s. Uh, and we see quite a bit of the osteophyte formation. In other words, the bones are spurring out and over. They're actually touching. And this sets somebody up for some pretty severe injury should they fall downstairs or become rear-ended or, or what have you. So as you can see, as we get older, the discs continue to degenerate. There's some bone spurring that occurs and the discs uh, lose their functionality. What's interesting though is you, we can reach this level or even this level and never have any symptoms whatsoever. However, if there's an inciting event such as a fall down some stairs, a slip on a wet floor, a rear end car collision, that can incite the pain. It can incite injury to that level where the bones are touching each other, perhaps breaking a bone or chipping a bone off. And that can cause quite a bit of interference with the person's life. Now, when an insurance company looks at this and they say, oh, what well, we see on the x-rays, you know, your, your, your disc is, is, is at this level here. There's quite a bit of uh, disc space height, height that's lost. There's quite a bit of bone spurring. There's maybe even some bone-on-bone -bone contact. Heck, we're not paying for your, for your injuries because we think it's, it's due to this condition and not because of the, the fact that our client rear-ended you at a stoplight. Thankfully, Oregon law protects folks in this situation because it provides that you can have a condition like this it can be asymptomatic or not have any symptoms at all. And if something happens to you, an inciting event that causes the symptoms to occur, then you get to recover. So hopefully this has been beneficial for you. And I wanna thank you for watching this video and feel free to look at the other videos on our website.